Hi Year 2, welcome to the last week of term, you only have five writing lessons left. So before we get started in with today's lesson, make sure you have the following. So you'll need your work pack and we'll be looking at the work we did last week, so Monday the 1st, and we'll be looking at the work that we are going to be doing today, which is Monday the 8th. You also need a pencil, press pause and make sure you have those things. Let's get started. So for the do now, you need to read your description from last Monday. So this is the description you wrote about the rainforest. Press pause now and complete that. So the reason you did that is to just recap your ideas and bring them back to the front of your mind because you'll be using a lot of them today. In today's lesson, we will be looking at engaging the reader. So what we want to do is we want to hold the reader's attention. We want them to keep reading. So you might be wondering, why is this screen blank? That's because we're going to do a short activity. So before we start, you need to close your eyes because I'm going to read something out to you. Whilst I'm reading, I want you to paint a picture in your mind of all the things that you can hear. So close your eyes now, make sure they're closed. So listen carefully. Throughout the vast rainforest, the sound of boisterous animals chattering, hissing and croaking reverberates through the air. Fragrant, colourful flowers are illuminated as the sun shines down on them. I could feel the stifling heat burning up my face. As I look up, a screeching majestic toucan swoops down to sit on a hard rock. Hanging from the glistening foliage are cheeky, chattering monkeys swinging from tree to tree. The slippery snake slithers along the tall trees. So in your mind, you should have a picture of a rainforest and then anything that I've described that you've added into your mind. So you would have had a picture of a rainforest in your mind, maybe some monkeys, some snakes, because that's what hissing sounds are, and croaking, maybe some frogs in your mind as well. And you're hearing these sounds, you're hearing, you're seeing these animals making these sounds. Then you would have had some flowers, maybe around the rainforest somewhere, and you know that there's a sun as well. You might have imagined yourself being in the rainforest and feeling the heat on your face. You would have thought about the toucan, the bird, they were coming to sit down on a rock, and then cheeky monkeys moving from tree to tree, and then you would have imagined a snake as well moving. The reason you were able to do that is because this is a very clear description. It's something that will engage the reader because they can imagine it easily in their mind. That's what we'll be working on today. We'll be trying to make our, reading, our writing as clear as possible so that the reader wants to keep reading. The way we're going to do this is by combining all the learning that we've done over the past few weeks and bring it all together into today's lesson. So before we get started on our writing, just have a look at this picture and make sure you've got the um, nouns that I've written labelled on your picture as well. So press pause now and do that. In this lesson, we are going to look at the text that I just read to you, the one that you pictured in your mind, and we're going to talk about the vocabulary, so any new words. Then we're going to talk about why it works, and then you'll get a chance to write some sentences. So I'm going to read it, read along with me. Throughout the vast rainforest, the sound of boisterous animals chattering, hissing and croaking reverberates through the air. Fragrant colourful flowers are illuminated as the sun shines down on them. What I've done is I've added in some pictures to help us understand the meaning of some of these words. So we'll start off with the word vast. The word vast just means huge. So if you see here, there's a picture of an ocean because oceans tend to be very huge. So we know that the rainforest is huge. Vast is a better word for it. The next word is reverberates. We're going to do some my turn, your turn here. Reverberates. Reverberates. So reverberate means to echo. So I'm going to give you an example first. If you've been to the gym to do PE with Mr. Keane or Mr. Gibbs, their voices will reverberate. They will echo because it's a very large room. So we're going to do something with this word to help us remember it. So my turn. Reverberates, 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 reverberates. Your turn. So 
So what we've done there is we've echoed that word. So when the sounds are happening in the forest, the chattering, the hissing and the croaking, they are reverberating, they're echoing, they don't just stop. The next one, fragrant colourful flowers are illuminated, the fragrant, have a look at this picture here, just something that smells nice. So instead of saying the nice smelling flowers, you're using the word fragrant. Illuminated, my turn, your turn, illuminated, lit up. Tell your pencil what illuminated means. So over here you can see that these lights over here are lighting up this particular stage. So here the sun is lighting up the flowers, so it's reflecting on the flowers. I forgot to mention the word boisterous. My turn, your turn, boisterous. Noisy and filled with energy. So this child has a loudspeaker and that would make a lot of noise, but you can see he's very happy. So the animals are very loud, but they're filled with energy. So we're looking at the first two sentences and this time we're going to think about why they work. So the first two sentences just describe the rainforest what you can see and what you can hear. So it starts off with a sentence opener. The reason we use these is to engage the reader to hold their attention because all the sentences will sound different. They're not repetitive. You have these in your booklet, so make sure you use them. Then we have adjectives. So the word boisterous gives you more information than the word noisy or loud. It tells us that the animals are noisy, but they're also very lively. Then we have chattering, hissing and croaking. So rather than saying, I heard chattering monkeys, I heard hissing snakes, I heard croaking frogs, they've listed all the sounds they can hear using um, commas. This sentence starts with an expanded noun phrase. The reason we use expanded noun phrases is to give even more detail to the reader. So you can imagine that they smell nice and they are colourful. So now that we've looked at the new vocab and it explained why it works, you're going to write the first two sentences which describe the rainforest. You can use varied sentence openers, so make sure your sentences all sound different, expanded noun phrases and adjectives. You've got your word mat on seesaw and you've got your sentence openers in your booklet. Once you've written the first two sentences describing the rainforest, come back and we will go through the rest of the text. So now we'll look at the next two sentences. I'll read them, read along with me. I could feel the stifling heat burning up my face. As I look up, a screeching majestic toucan swoops down to sit on a hard rock. So let's start off with the word stifling. In this picture, you can see this man, it's very, very hot, and you can see him sweating with a fan on his face. My turn, your turn, stifling. So hot, it's hard to breathe. Tell your pencil what stifling means. So what we know about this rainforest is it's that hot that you can't breathe in it. And then the next word is majestic. We've come across this in, last, in our last session. Majestic, extremely beautiful. So instead of just saying it's beautiful, we understand that this um, toucan is extremely beautiful. So these two sentences describe how you feel in the rainforest. Now, the reason that this would engage the reader is because they can imagine exactly how you're feeling and put themselves in your place. So when you're talking about what you can feel, the reader can imagine that more clearly. So it starts off with a different sentence opener. So it started off with, I could, and it's fine to write like that. I can, I could, I could hear, I could feel, I could taste as long as that's not how every single one of your sentence starts. Then we have an adjective, stifling, and so in the hot heat, because we already know it's hot, so that's what heat is, it's telling us exactly how hot it is. It's so hot, you can't breathe. As I look up, it tells us exactly what you're doing, so the reader can imagine you looking up. And this is a different sentence opener, so very sentence opener from this one. 
a screeching majestic toucan, so you use an expanded noun phrase, so exactly what you can hear, the toucan is screeching, and how it looks, it looks extremely beautiful, majestic. So now that we've talked through those two sentences, you are going to write two sentences describing how you feel or what you can see, what you can taste, what you can smell in the rainforest. You still need to use various sentence openers, so that doesn't mean you start writing, I can, I could, I can smell um, repeatedly. You can still use different sentence openers. Use some expanded noun phrases and adjectives. You have your word mark, just like you did last time, and you have your sentence openers. So remember, you are describing yourself in the rainforest now. Press pause now and complete that, and then come back once you're done. These are the last two sentences, so read along with me. Hanging from the glistening foliage are cheeky chattering monkeys swinging from tree to tree. The slippery snake slithers along the tall trees. So the word glistening is one you've come across before. My turn, your turn. Glistening, shining. You can add a little action there. So it's shining. Um, and then foliage are just lots of leaves. So over here, if you look very carefully, you can see that some of these leaves are glistening, they are shining, and it's probably because the sun is reflecting on them. So um, the next word we might not be too sure about is slither. slither. So slither can, means to move by twisting and turning. So it's my turn, your turn. Slither, slither, to move by twisting and turning. Tell your pencil what slither means. Here's a little challenge for you. Try and slither. Try and move by twisting and turning. And that's exactly how snakes move. Now that we've discussed the vocabulary, the new words, let's talk about why this works. So these two sentences describe what is happening in the forest. So you might think this is very similar to the first two sentences you wrote. But it's quite different because the first two sentences you're telling me about the forest these two sentences you're talking about what is happening in this forest so what are the animals specifically doing how are they moving how are they behaving so over here we have our hanging from the and the slippery snake they both of these sentences start in different ways and that's what we want for all of your sentences the word glistening is an adjective, it's describing the leaves. So instead of saying it hanging, hanging from the leaves, we know that these leaves are shining, are cheeky chattering monkeys. So we know that how the monkeys are behaving, they're quite cheeky, and we know the sounds they're making. That's why an expanded noun phrase is used to give more detail. And then finally, we have the slippery snake. We know what kind of snake it is, and it's an adjective to describe it. So these are the last two sentences you will be writing. You will be describing what is happening in the forest. So how are the animals behaving? Just like last time, use some various sentence openers. Make sure your sentences um, start in different ways. Use expanded noun phrases and adjectives. Once you've done that, come back because there's a bonus task that you can complete. So press pause now and complete that. Well done, so you've written up your description of the forest and hopefully you've kept in mind that you want to engage the reader, you want them to want to continue reading, you want to hold their attention. Now I have a bonus task for you. As a bonus task, I want you to look at your description and then draw a picture of it. So if you've talked about frogs, draw a picture of a frog in your rainforest and then what you can do is upload all of your work onto Seesaw for your teachers to see. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!